Hey everybody, and welcome to Comics from the Future. I'm Andy. I'm Matt. We're here with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this is our big show where we show you some of the biggest and best books that you can pre-order by this weekend over at infinityflux.net. So head over there right now, and everything that you pre-order, you get 10% off of, mm -hmm. just as a fun bonus. So we've got a great show for you today. Some really interesting books, some big books. Uh, so I can't wait to get into it. Yeah. Let's start off with our featured comics. First is Deadpool Wolverine World War Three number one. This is going to be a three issue mini series that uh, it's written by Joe Kelly. The art is by Adam Kubert, so you know it's going to read well. It's going to look good, and the solicitation says that this is a globe spanning saga for the ages. So there is a villain named Delta who I think popped up in the last Deadpool series. Am I that right about that? sounds right. Sounds familiar. Um, but uh, they have their sights set on Deadpool, and Wolverine's going to get involved, and they say that World War III will erupt. And that's it. So, yeah. you know, but you can only imagine that uh, the two of these guys getting together, yeah, some big things are going to happen. Uh, comes out uh, May 1st. So we're uh, getting real close to yeah, the movie. Uh, about maybe six weeks, seven weeks before the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. So it's a, it's a, it's good timing. So if you're excited for the movie, this is going to be a great one to check out. And we have the uh, first issue of Deadpool's uh, new series written by yeah. Cody Ziegler coming out next week that we'll be talking about on Monday. So all kinds of cool Deadpool and Wolverine stuff to enjoy over the next couple months. So this is our A cover right here. We have a Delato variant. We have a Rob Liefeld variant. And we have a Todd Knock Window Shades variant. I love seeing the you know these window shades variants. Like what what weird thing are they going to do yeah. this time? You know, like these are great. Yeah, whether the window is open or closed or what the yeah. window is. Yeah, I think the one with like Thanos was like a window on a spaceship. Right, and it's very cool. And Todd Knox, great. Yep. Yeah. Okay, next up we have Star Wars: The Phantom Menace 25th Anniversary Special Number One, celebrating 25 years of the Phantom Menace. Uh, I remember it very fondly, and I believe I saw it in theaters eight times. Wow. Yeah. I, I only saw it twice in theaters, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I wasn't even that old. I must have been pestering my parents yeah. quite a bit. Uh, so, I'm very excited about this. This is written by Greg Pak and uh, art by Will Sliney. And this is going to be kind of your uh, prequel to the prequel. It's huh. going to have stories set before, uh, in between the scenes of, and after uh, Phantom Menace. And it sounds like it's mostly going to be focusing on Anakin, which I think is a really cool thing because Anakin doesn't come into the movie for about halfway through. Yeah. You've got a lot of stuff in the beginning. And kind of getting inside his mind about, you know, these people just show up and, and say, hey, you're going to be a Jedi. Leave your mom and mm -hmm. come with us. Uh, it feels like it's going to be breaking apart some of those stories. So we're going to see uh, what they call the dream of a Jedi, the gift of a Tusken Raider, uh, the heart of a Gungan, the ache of a mother, and the horror of a hero. So you can kind of get some ideas uh, on there of some of the stories we'll be seeing. The gift of a Tuscan Raider, I'm not quite sure because later he slaughters them all. So it's just a big, one of those big sticks, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Or some I will be back in ten years to kill you. <laughs> to kill you. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very excited about this. And this sounds awesome. We've got some great covers for this. So this is our A cover, which I believe is Phil Noto. Yeah. We also have this Chris Sprouse variant with Amidala. We have this Mike McCone variant with Qui-Gon. And we have this uh, Phil Noto. This is the uh, Master and Apprentice variant with Plo Koon and uh, Bolta Swan, which is pretty cool because I don't know if we've ever seen Plo Koon's Apprentice... <laughs> I don't in comics. Oh, in comics, yeah. I was gonna say I don't remember seeing her in the movie, but yeah, yeah, no, I don't think she. I don't think she was in the movie. She might have been in one quick flash, yeah, maybe in uh, episode two. But very cool. I love Plo Koon. Next is Venom Separation Anxiety number one. This is a, a new uh, what they call retro series or retro mini series. You it's, know, it's like its own little tag on the covers. So they they kind of have them in the solicitation in the solicitations, like in the Marvel preview yeah. books. There's like a little black circle that says retro pick or yeah. whatever. But uh, yeah, you're right. It needs to have something. But you know, it's another one of those that that uh, fits in uh, around the time of the books that came out in the '90s. You know, set back then. Um, this is written by uh, David McLeany and the artist by Gerardo Sandoval. He did 
the artwork on um, Death of the Venomverse. It's the one where Carnage was jumping around. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it looked really good. So um, this one says that uh, Venom has made a new enemy of the Purple Man. Uh, and, you know, the Purple Man is the guy who can... We saw him in the first season of Jessica Jones. He can just Horrifying. say something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it really was creepy. Yeah, but he can, like, uh, you know, make you do stuff just by saying words to you, basically. This says that the bond between Eddie Brock and his symbiote are going to be tested like never before when the Purple Man threatens to completely tear Eddie's world apart, starting with his symbiote. And we know from the covers of issue two, it looks like Purple Man gets his own symbiote. So he's all, you know, on the cover for the second one, he's all purpled out, but as a symbiote. Oh. So I can't imagine the Purple Man is already dangerous enough. Having a symbiote. He doesn't even really need it. Yeah. It's as, an extra. Yeah. So that'll be really cool to see. And this cover right here, the Web of Spider-Man number one homage. Mm -hmm. I love this cover a bunch. So, yeah. So a new Venom retro series. That's our A cover. There's a Gerardo Sandoval variant. That is your interior artist. So that's, that's awesome. what's going to look like. Yeah. I love that one. Uh, John Boy Myers has a variant, which love looks that great. One. <laughs> and there's a Ron Lim foil variant, which that They're one looks good, good too. Yeah. They're all good. Yeah. They're batting 100 yep. or 1,000. Okay, next up we've got DC's Spring Breakout number one, one shot. This is DC's big spring anthology book. Uh, and the the special part in this is the breakout part. So it sounds like all the stories have something to do with breaking something. Uh, we've got... All of them have something to do with breaking out and all the characters just getting a bunch of poison ivy and like, oh, oh, you know, scratching. And it does say um, it might have a story about someone with breakout zits on their face. Oh, well, there so, you go. Uh, but we're going to have all the heroes and villains of the DCU experiencing different kinds of breaks. Uh, we're going to have a story with Harley breaking King Shark out of Belle Reve. We've got uh, Superman in spring break training. Uh, we've got breaking out of your shell with Mr. Freeze and Batman. I got to preview some of these pages for this. Uh, that story looks really, really cool. It's very Batman the Animated Series nice. looking. Uh, we've got Katana. Uh, breaking down an adversary. Teen Titans go on a spring break trip to the beach where, of course, they're going to run into some villains there as well. So a lot of really cool ones. It didn't say all here, but I can tell you there is also a really cool Metal Man story. Nice. Metal Man story. Uh, so if you're a fan of these anthologies, they're really, really fun. Just one and done stories. Uh, don't miss out on this one. I believe it's uh, $9.99. That's usually how much these are, anywhere yeah. between seven ninety nine and nine ninety nine. But they're thick. They have a whole bunch of different, like you said, like yeah. eight or it's, ten it's stories. Eight in them. stories. Eight stories. In this. Okay. So yeah. yeah, you get a lot for your money, uh, and we've got some great covers. So this is our A cover. Then we have our Dan hmm. Mora hmm. Uh, Bat Batman. Yeah, that looks great. And we have this really nice Dan Mora Harley Quinn variant. I love this. Yeah, one I think also. I think that one's gonna go pretty well. I think that's yeah. really cool. It's just yeah. so bright and clean. Yeah. Next is Get Fury number one. This is a new mini series. This one's written by Garth Ennis, and the art is by Jason Burroughs and Goran Parlov. This one sounds really cool. Uh, if you can see, it's a it's a Max title. You know, see, it says Max Comics there. Wow, which we, we haven't seen that in forever. Exactly. Yeah, we haven't seen anything from the Max line, which is kind of like Marvel's Black Label before yeah. it was Black Label. Although I guess you could say maybe Vertigo was Max before Max yeah. was Max. Like I don't know. There's. You, you know what I'm talking about, though. But this one is set in 1971 during the Vietnam War. Nick Fury gets captured by the Viet Cong. Now, um, they the, the Viet Cong doesn't know this, but Nick Fury has a whole bunch of secrets in his head that could uh, severely damage the United States. He has a lot of government secrets. The Viet Cong doesn't know that. However, the CIA does know that he has all these secrets, and they want to make sure that the Viet Cong doesn't eventually realize who it is that they have, what he knows, and try to get those secrets out of him. So in order to prevent that from happening, they dispatch Frank Castle to uh, go in there and take Fury out, which I think is interesting. Not go in there to rescue him. Like, go in there to kill him so that, uh, you know, the, the enemies can't get uh, honestly, government secrets. Honestly, Punisher can't do anything else. Like, right. like get him... Go in quietly and get him out. It's like I'm I'm Punisher. Like this is what I yeah. do. So this is really cool. I uh, I miss old school Nick Fury. I miss uh, you know Punisher Frank Castle. Yeah. Just like doing like covert things and taking out bad Very guys. And grounded stuff. Yeah. like mm -hmm. military. Yeah. So I think this is going to be really cool. I'm highly anticipating this one. So this is our A cover right here. We have a Rose Antonio variant. We have a Juan Ferreira variant, and then there is a uh, Jason Burroughs variant. So that's one of your interior artists. Very cool. 
Next up, we've got Universal Monsters, The Creature from the Black Lagoon Lives, number one. This is going to be a four-issue miniseries, uh, and this is by Dan Waters, Ram V, and the art is by Matthew Roberts, and the colors are done by Dave Stewart, which I love Dave Stewart's colors from all the Hellboy mm. universe stuff and everything. So, in this, this is set uh, years after the events of the first film. I love Universal Monsters stuff, so anything that expands on those uh original universal monsters i'm all for i know there is there's a couple of sequels to creature from the black lagoon but this is kind of an all original story uh and in this there is a journalist named kate marsden who is hunting a serial killer uh that is out in the middle of the amazon and i'm not sure why a journalist is hunting a serial killer. Maybe she really wants an interview. Or... Yeah, it sounds like, you know, if it were modern day, it would be to do like a true crime podcast or yeah, something like that. Or yeah. just maybe just get like, to get I'm going to get the ultimate story mm -hmm. on this. Uh, but there she runs into the creature. But is he going to be friend or foe? He's, I mean, in the movie, he's kind of just like, you came into his territory. Yeah. He's just a creature that's living out there. So I imagine it could go either way. Uh, and what about the serial killer that's out there? Might you know there might be a, a third element in this that they'll have to contend with. But very very cool. Very excited to check this one out. Uh, and like I said, it is a four issue miniseries, kind of like the Dracula one yeah. did. So this is our A cover. We also have a Joshua Middleton cover. Very cool. And we have a blank sketch cover mm. to draw all of the creepy aquatic things you can think <laughs> right. of. Next is Drawing Blood number one. This is going to be a 12-issue miniseries. Uh, this is written by David Avalon and Kevin Eastman of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fame. The art's by Ben Bishop, Troy Little, and Kevin Eastman. Um, now, this is, uh, this is about the roller coaster life of a successful comic creator. And it says that when you create a global, a global franchise before you're 20, what happens next? So that sounds very Kevin Eastman, right? Yeah. Creating the Ninja Turtles. Um, so this story in particular is going to follow a comic book creator named Shane Bookman. Um, he, uh, he creates this global phenomenon, this, uh, huge property that everybody loves, but his real life is going to become more absurd and action packed than any comic book story he could dream up. So it looks like you can see some dudes with guns at the bottom. Yeah. Maybe he gets mixed up with some wrong people. I don't really know, you know, what... oh, and I didn't even notice like on the right hand side, there's three creatures kind of jumping down. So with and... this, this was a Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Uh, back in... Uh, 2019, something like that. Uh, and it's really cool. So I got to see, since it is kind of halfway out or whatever, uh, some preview pages. He creates basically the Ninja Turtles, but they're cats. Okay. Uh, and there's like big conventions that come up around them. There's movies he has to deal with the licensing. There's partners he had. So, I mean, this feels very autobiographical sure. but with some kind of x factors to it about yeah. it gets a little bit more out of control so right. i think this is really cool especially if you like the the idea of like you know comic creators and and that side of the comic book universe yeah. you'll really like this yeah it sounds super duper cool and 12 issues so it's going to be around for a year or so uh so we have our a cover by kevin eastman we have a ben bishop variant and then we have a Ben Bishop, Kevin Eastman, and Robert Rodriguez variant. I guess maybe there was a jam piece or something. Maybe yeah. they did the ink and color or something, but that looks cool. Yeah, and it does have, like, you'll get to a section, and it'll be all Kevin Eastman art. And it's oh, very okay. Kevin Eastman. And seeing him draw these other characters that aren't uh, Ninja Turtles, but they're, like, cat ninjas, mm -hmm. is very, very cool. Maybe we'll see him by the Ninja Turtles one day. Yep. Okay, next up, we have Duke number five. We couldn't help but mention the final oh, issue yeah. of the miniseries. Very excited about this one. So uh, the key things in here, it does say Codename G.I. Joe is here. So I wonder, are they finally going to dub their group G.I. Joe at this point? What is it going to be? Um, I'm sure kind of a whole world is going to be opened up to Duke yeah. in this one. Uh, and Duke gets in a fight far bigger than he could ever have imagined. And I feel like maybe in this one he's going to learn the truth about the Transformers and that his fight is not only Earth, but entire universe-based. Yeah. And the exciting thing, a last page shocker no one will see coming. And a lot of books say stuff like that. But with this series, I believe it. literally, I don't know what could yeah. appear on the last yeah. page. 
So don't sleep on this. Uh, don't miss out. Wrapping up that first mini series, we'll get Cobra Commanders wrapping up next, and then we get our Destro and Scarlet mini series. Mm -hmm. Just all fantastic. Yeah. So we've got our A cover right here. And we have a Medius Centiluco variant. And if you haven't read the issue from this week, uh, don't look at this one too hard. Yeah, right. But, uh, <laughs> it's very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, next is White Boat number one. This is the first of a three issue miniseries from Distillery. Didn't we talk about this? We before? talked about this. It was originally solicited, I want to say, a month or two ago. Okay. Quite a while. But it looks like this is the final. Uh, all the variants are there this time. The final, the, final order cut off. The final, final order cut off. <laughs> Uh, but it never hurts to go ahead and place your orders. Yeah, for sure. So um, this one's written by Scott Snyder. The art is by Francesco Francesco Francavia. Um, we saw a preview of this in the Devil's Cut one shot from Distillery from a few months back, and it was one of my favorites. I was in about there. to say it's one of my favorites. Yeah. It was super creepy. Yeah. So the solicitation for this one doesn't really talk specifically about the story, but really what it does more is. Um, it just sort of pontificates a little bit because it says that white boats are mega yachts that the super rich use to traverse the globe. Being on a super yacht like this white boat is a big privilege until the crew traps you and takes you to a remote island where a secret cult is working on something called the Human Project. Um, so that's... I'm, I'm already sold. Now, what we saw in the Devil's Cut... Um, uh, like anthology book was a guy who actually goes on a super yacht looking for wasn't his brother he was looking Something for somebody like that, I think yeah. um, but the yacht was weird because every time he would keep turning down hallways it was like the, it was changing around him yeah. he went into one of the cabins in the boat and it looked exactly like his apartment yeah. or maybe it was his bedroom when he was a kid his I don't... bedroom when he was a kid okay. yeah and he would hear voices coming yeah. from like the next room over yeah but and... he thought he was the only one there so I'm really excited for this one. I, I think this one's going to be the best one so far. I was about to say, this is the one out of all of them I was looking forward to the most. Because yeah. it just hits all of those kind of, like, kind of Lovecraftian mm -hmm. with the cults and everything. Yeah. The, uh, it feels very Twilight Zone. Yeah. So I love this. And, you know, we saw uh, Scott Snyder and Frank Avia work together on his other book. Um, um, the Ghoul one. Was it the, yeah, the some, yeah, Night yeah, of the Ghoul? Night of the Ghoul. Yeah, and that one was creepy too. So these two together make some Even great back in the day, comics. they worked on uh, detective comics together. That's right. Yeah, so I'm very excited for this one. So this is our A cover. We have a Kelly Jones variant. Very creepy if you look at that one, these things that are sitting on the rocks. Yeah. And then the one I pre-ordered, the Ryan Stegman variant with a big old fish. Uh, <laughs> even if this doesn't happen in it, this is just all yeah. I want. Yeah, for this sure. Great. That'd be a great poster. It really yeah. would. I love Ryan Stegman. Yeah. Okay, next up we have other number ones continuing to roll out the number ones for this week. First off, we got Robo Force. This is this is kind of the thing I've been really touting for a while. Yeah. The Nacelle verse stuff, just because I love uh, comic properties based on toys, very a la Master Universe, Thundercats, Transformers, uh, Ninja Turtles, just kind of that like uh, synergy between. Comics, cartoons, all of that, because Robo Force is also getting a cartoon, and this is the lead into it. So uh, this is by Melissa Flores and uh, Diogenes Neves pulling the art on this, who did this cover, which is beautiful. And this is, uh, if you remember the old Robo Force from the '80s, it's using those, but definitely upgrading them. So it's about Max 89. This is your main uh, robo on the cover. He's the latest innovation uh, in the field of robotics. He is great. You know, he's like, this was revolutionary. But his creator created something else. And it doesn't really get into what that is. But whatever this other thing is was stolen. And it's up to rubber Robo Force, not Rubber Force. Rubber Force. That's a whole different That's force. That's Plastic Man's yeah. team. <laughs> uh, robo Force. Uh, so we've got Max and along with Detonator, who is the yellow one uh, out of the two Robo Force characters, are going to be uh, teaming up to get back whatever this was. And this is a uh, robot on robot firepower action comic. So I can't wait for this. It's going to be three issues long, so it's not a huge commitment. And I believe Netflix is getting the TV show, and it's produced by The Rock. Uh, it makes Dwayne total Johnson. sense, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, Nacelle Verse, if you didn't know, is uh, if you watch the toys that made us or the movies that made us, it's the people behind those. So they love these properties. Soon we're getting the biker mice from Mars. A lot of really great stuff. So get in on the ground floor 
with RoboForce number one. I <coughs> will say um, there was an issue with our ordering system where it wasn't showing up, but we've alerted them to it. So if it doesn't come up when you're trying to order RoboForce right away, give it a little bit and it will probably be up okay. very, very soon. Yeah. So we've got our A cover right here. We've got a Delfonso cover. Oh, it's really yeah, cool. yeah. I love all the different robots. Yeah. I like how the feet, one one foot looks like the base of the old toys. Like yeah. in the toys, the whole thing was like this big cylinder suction cup looking thing, but that's what each foot looks like. <laughs> yeah. Now. We've got the toy variant. Yeah, this is what, the yeah. toy that uh, Nacelle has made that yeah. you can order right now. These look so much cooler than we, the ones in the 80s. We saw them at yeah. a convention recently, yeah. and they're yeah, very, very cool. We also have a blank sketch variant as well. So next is Barbaric Born in Blood, number one. This is going to be a new three-issue miniseries uh, set in the Barbaric universe. A, a new volume, basically. That's how they've been doing these. It's like They'll do like three-issue miniseries, release them as a trade, and, and just continuing the story. And I love this because it seems like Vault has quietly been building their own little universe over here to the side. I don't hear a lot of talk about this, but it's unfortunate because this is great. Barbaric's great. Yeah. They have other books that uh, are spun off from this. And it's like this. they've got this whole little world um of like you know fantasy and barbarianism talking and, weapons yeah talking weapons for sure um so in this one the solicitation says that uh this is a new uh, a good jumping on point because we are going to get introduced to a new villain named Oric. uh he's a tortured barbarian turned master torturer Ooh. um who will take us deep into owen's past revealing secrets that should have stayed buried so uh i'm a little bit behind on barbaric so i don't know like how far they've gone in but the um the first couple that i've read are amazing mm -hmm. uh the, the art is great cool. yeah um it's it's funny but it's action-packed it's bloody it's basically everything you want uh and yeah the talking axe is great making him do good things and when he doesn't want to um, so yeah, if you're a fan of the barbaric stuff, do not miss this start of a brand new volume. And if you've been wanting to check it out, like I said, this uh, it says that this is a good jumping on point as well. So we have our A cover right here. We have a Corn Howl variant, and then there is a uh, Sanji Vault Vintage variant, which is the uh, homage to Berserk, Berserk Volume yeah, One, yeah. which very fitting, mm -hmm. uh, about equally as over the top violent. Yeah. Okay, next up we got Notable 2s and 3s, continuations of series that just started or are about to start, and you need to get your orders in for them so you don't miss out on the next part, starting with Feral number 2. Now this just came out this week, so I don't want to give away too much. We know the basic premise of this, where uh, there seems to be a strain of rabies that's going around, but how big is the spread as these three house cats get separated from their home uh, and are having to make their way back through these horrifying woods mm -hmm. full of uh, rabid raccoons and foxes and all of that. Uh, and there's something horrible that uh, we found out at the end, but I won't give it away, but... Oh, it, right. It, it I just, just yeah. look like cute little cats, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a fun book. Uh, pay attention to all the blood on the cover, because that's <laughs> what you're going to get. Uh, but just a lovely first issue... If you're a fan of stray dogs don't miss out on feral it is yeah, so good if you if you enjoy stray dogs you will love this i, yeah, I guarantee yeah you. there's no mm -hmm. it's it's the same but different yeah uh so this is our a cover for that we also have our uh trish forrester and tony fleeks variant which is of course an homage not yeah not yeah not street, yeah yeah <laughs> And then this is oh, the man. second printing of Pharaoh's number one. No surprise, it's already gone to a second printing because of how big this is. Yeah. And of course, it's an homage to Halloween. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next is Batman Dark Age number two. The first issue came out this week. It was super cool. Uh, you know, the Batman's origin, but set in real time starting in 1957. Um, the big change to his origin in, uh, in this first issue was that after his, his parents were killed, but Bruce Wayne was not with them when it happened. And he never traveled the globe to learn how to do all these skills and stuff. He just grew up as a spoiled rich kid, basically. Um, I don't. It's. I don't want to say what happens at the end of that issue, but it's hard not to because of what this is. So um, let's just say this: in as in a way to get out of some trouble that he got into in the first issue, he signs up for a tour with the army in Vietnam. So. The first issue, I thought, oh, that's different. He just stayed in Gotham and grew up as a spoiled rich kid. But now his origin is getting 
like different, more and more and more different yeah. than the original. Spread so out a little yeah. Bit and... So he signs up. Uh, he enlists in the army. Uh, he goes off to Vietnam uh, as a way to get out some trouble that he got into. Um, and that experience, it says, will change him forever. And it says, witness the birth of the bat under the watchful eye of Sergeant Ray Shao Ghoul. Wow, yeah. so they are going a very different <laughs> Yeah, so way. this is wildly different, but it's really good. The first issue, like I said, there um, when we talked about it on Monday, there's there's almost no Batman in it whatsoever, and it doesn't matter because I was I was like engrossed in this story. Mm-hmm. So I am very excited for this to see just how much different it becomes. Um, yeah, so I, I think this is going to be great. And this is a, a six-issue miniseries, unlike Superman Space Age, which is only three issues. However... Superman Space Age, each issue was like square bound. Yeah. It was like thick, whereas these ones are more or less normal comic size. So uh, probably going to wind up being about the same amount of content. Even when you said six issues, I was thinking, this probably should be 12. It yeah. feels like you're telling a big story. A big story, story yeah, for sure. So we have our A cover by Mike Allred. There is a Dave Johnson cover. That looks cool. I bet we won't see that, though. And then there is a uh, Paul Pope variant as well. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, next up we have Weapon X-Men issue number three. We haven't got issue number two yet, but of course this is the team of Wolverines from different realities come together to stop Onslaught. Uh, Phoenix has brought them together. But in this one, uh, the team begins to splinter because, I mean, Wolverines usually work alone. And uh, all these Wolverines together aren't doing too well. Uh, And they're going to have to side with one evil to to overcome another and you know that those kind of decisions are really going to mess with them. And what does all this have to do with Jane Howlett's past? So our new uh, Wolverine that was introduced, Jane Howlett, uh, seems to be kind of the main mystery of mm-hmm. this. Uh, where did she come from? What Earth? All of that. So if you enjoyed the first one, we got the second one. I'm guessing coming out very soon. And then we've got the third one. We've got our A cover here. We've got a Wills Portacio variant. And we have, of course, this really nice uh, Yudorei Sinar variant, which is an homage to uh, every comic ever. Uh, yeah, I can't, uh, I can't put my finger on it, but it looks familiar. Yeah. yeah. Next is Man's Best Number Two. This is a uh, five-issue miniseries. The first issue came out, I think it was last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this one, this says. So the three, this follows three animals on a distant planet looking for the crew of their crashed ship. The solicitation, I think, calls them the Musketeers. Oh, that's but fine. It, which makes total sense, but it, they weren't, they didn't call themselves that in the first issue. So I just thought that was pretty neat. Um, but they, you know, on that planet they're on, they explore a newly discovered biome that is full of. It's populated by giant robots. Uh, but they had soon learned that there's more to this civilization than they realize. One of the animals disobeys orders, and they all find themselves captured and helpless. Mm. So you know they're gonna, you know they're looking for their crew, but they are gonna you know uh, find themselves in a lot of trouble on the way there. So uh, we have our A cover. That's or, our B cover. Oh, that's our B cover. Yeah. Yep. And then we have an FOC reveal variant. Very cool. Yeah, I think those were the only ones available oh, at okay, the gotcha. time. Okay, next up we got cool covers. Just really cool covers. We want to make sure you see for cool books inside. Starting with X-Men number 34. Uh, the Krakoan Age is nearly at its end. What will the final battle of the mutants of Krakoa be? And uh, 35 is going to be the final issue of mm. this run of X-Men. So you're right there at the end. Uh, I'm guessing a bunch is going to happen right yeah. here. So don't miss out on the end of the whole Krakoan thing and issue 35 I believe is going to be a 9.99 book I'm guessing that's going to be I think a lot's going to happen in this one and that one's going to be a big kind of wrap up yeah uh, oh, I'm sure like, that's going to be a big oversized one it's yeah. probably going to be like maybe leading the characters into where they're going next or kind of showing okay here's here's where we're leaving each of the characters yeah. so I'm very excited about this because I feel like big stuff is going to happen this issue this is our A cover We've got a Hildebrandt variant. Actually, is that Kate Pride? Maybe. I can't it does quite look tell. like she's she's walking through a wall. Oh yeah, so, yeah, duh. yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> I don't. It's a very different outfit. Right. And we have oh, yeah. this uh, Russell Dodderman variant, which is a. I don't think it's a wraparound. I think it's a vertical. Oh, okay. Next is Invincible Iron Man number 18. So speaking of X-Men, Iron Man in this issue is going to be fighting side-by-side with Magneto. 
Now, uh, you know, it says that uh, Iron, uh, Magneto has always been Iron Man's greatest fear. I don't know if that's exactly true, but, you know, being able to control metal is not great for... He's always been on his radar. Yeah, about, for sure. Hey, <laughs> steer clear. Yeah, but in this one, they're going to have to work together to take down Orcus. So, you know, all of the X-Men stuff is coming to an end. Uh, the final showdown with Orcus. Iron Man has been involved with it for a while. The Avengers are going to get tangled up in it. Actually, next week, I think, Yeah. Uh, the new one comes out, so... Everybody's getting in on this uh, Fall of the House of X stuff, and uh, here is Iron Man's installment in that. Great A cover, Yeah, too. for sure. Yeah, these are all great. Yeah, so uh, there is our A cover, and then there's a Pete Woods uh, black costume variant. That looks... That's weird. That looks like Iron Man 2020, but mixed with War Machine or maybe a symbiote. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's... it's supposed to be a symbiote because they're doing uh, black costume variants. I saw... Oh. Uh, I think... Asrar do the uh, Miss Marvel that's going to be coming out. Oh, and she okay. has a more traditional like black symbiote suit on. So. And that, that makes sense because there's another big Venom story coming yeah. out soon. So yeah, I guess that's what it is. But it's a weird Iron Man suit to pick to then do that because it's then, like, right, it yeah. looks a lot like War Machine. Right, it does. Okay, next there up, you go. we've got, yep, here we go, Spider-Woman number seven. Of course, this is the Peach Momoko variant for it, but this sounds really interesting. Jess has returned to San Francisco after uh, the stuff with, we don't know quite what's going to happen with her son at this point, mm -hmm. her, her missing baby, uh, but it does sound like it gets wrapped up in the issue right before this. Uh, only to discover in San Francisco, a new brand of young heroes have burst onto the scene, which sounds like this is going to be your new champions. But who yeah. are they? Yeah. What are they? Who they say they are? It gives me a lot of feels thunderbolts. of thunderbolts yeah. of like, oh, uh, I don't. It feels odd that there's a bunch of new characters right at once. Mm -hmm. um, but the issue after this on the A cover actually has one of the new characters on it. So be looking out for possible first appearances of. But is characters. it new characters that we've never seen, or just characters that we've seen before, but maybe not in a while, or? It, it sounded like when they named them in the next issue, they were new. Okay. Some new names. Okay. So, uh, not positive, but I'm really interested in the story. Yeah. So, that is our Peach Momoko variant for it. The black suit variant. Which, I don't think she's ever had a symbiote suit. One of the few people. Everybody else has, yeah, yeah, but not her. Not yet, anyway. Next is Immortal Thor, number 10. We wanted to show you this awesome Greg Capullo variant. Greg Capullo drawing anything is fantastic. The solicitation on this one is a little bit vague because they've all... Uh, the solicitation for every issue in this series so far has been more like a story. You know, um, uh, you know, Thor fights against three of his foes, and this is the story of... So I'm not really sure. This is after the Roxxon Presents Thor story that we have talked about, the, the one that's a little bit meta, that kind of thing. Um, but it does say that this is the story of the immortal Thor and the Minotaur's final triumph. So I wonder if maybe... This is maybe like the last part of this big grand story they've been telling since the first issue. And then maybe after this one, they'll start a new story. Like I'm not 100% sure. But, um, you know, if you've been in reading Immortal Thor, don't miss out on this one. Because this, this, may, this may tie in a little bit to this, this whole rocks on thing that they're doing. Especially if it says Thor and Minotaur's was it victory. or Yeah, the, the Minotaur's final triumph. So. so it sounds like, ooh, that's... Yeah. Because he's kind of put placed himself as being the one of the heroes right. of the Rocks on universe. I feel like we'll know more. Immortal Thor number nine comes out next week. We'll be talking about it on Monday, and I think we'll know more after that issue comes mm -hmm. out. So, uh, But yeah, we wanted to show you this cover, though, because it is super cool by Mr. Greg Capullo. Love seeing Greg Capullo back at Marvel doing yep. some cool Marvel mm -hmm. covers. Okay, next up, ah, we've nice. got the Incredible Hulk. This is uh, the Justin Mason uh, cover for issue number 12. And in this, Hulk seeks the help of Brother Voodoo. Which I always love seeing Brother Voodoo and yeah. stuff. So uh, very cool. And I like these uh, covers they've been doing. There was a Spider-Man flip cover. Oh, that's right. There's the Hulk smash. So is there a Wolverine snicked cover? Not yet, but I bet there, there needs will to be. be. Yeah. There's everybody has their iconic sound. Right. So uh, this is uh, Vengeance of the Moon Knight number five. Sorry, I gotta make a gotta make a note real quick for our time stamps. Um, Vengeance of the New Night number five. Um, this is, is this another one of those? Uh... It's the one of the ones that where they have like Ghost Rider heads. Oh, I thought maybe it was a symbiote. It looked like he had a symbiote on for a second. Um, so the uh, this is a Blood Hunt tie-in. So there are several series that are ongoing right now that are going to tie into the Blood Hunt series. So not a separate miniseries or anything, just part of the regular run. 
But um, this says that this new Moon Knight here sets his sights on everything that Mark Spector held uh, uh, held dear in life. This one's going to try to take it down. What's interesting is next week, number four comes out. We'll be talking about it on Monday, and allegedly we find out who the Moon who the new Moon Knight is in number four. So I think uh, once we read that, this might make more sense here. But uh, yeah, this is the Martin Cocolo Stormbreakers variant. And next up, we've got Power Girl issue number eight. This is cool because this is a tie into the House of Brainiac story. So, you know, we don't know exactly what Brainiac and his Lobo army do in Metropolis, but it sounds like Power Girl is the last one standing. Maybe at full size? Maybe the only one not shrunk down to minuscule size? We'll have to find out how Brainiac defeats them all. But Power Girl manages to get away. But as she's trying to figure out what to do, she runs into Crush, the daughter of Lobo. And of course, we've got Lobo is going to be out with Superman trying mm. to stop Brainiac and the Lobo army. Uh, so what is Crush and Power Girl going to do? Really cool. I'm excited to read this. I'm excited for all the House of Brainiac yeah, story. Yeah, going great. So, uh, you know, not you don't have to read this to get the full uh, House of Brainiac story, but it is a fun kind of... What do you call them? They're they're not tie-ins, really. They're just kind of like like ancillary books or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it brushes up against yeah. it. So. I don't think it's going to inject a lot into the main story, but it will take from the main yeah. story and show you what Power Girl's doing during it. Yeah, for sure. Which is because it's such a super family focused yeah. story. So this is our A cover. We also have this really nice Mark Brooks cover. I love that big oh, great. paper flag or whatever in the background yeah. with the Superman S on it. And then we also have the Scott Forbes variant as well. Next to Detective Comics number 1084, this is inching ever closer to the finale, the grand finale of this big Gotham Nocturne mega story that they've been telling for, <laughs> I want to say close to two years My whole now. life, actually. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe at least 18 months or so. Um, <laughs> in this one, Batman has returned to Gotham City. Um, and, but the, the city has changed thanks to the Orgum's uh, hypnotic suggestions because the city no longer remembers Batman and Batman doesn't really recognize what's going on in the city either because of what the Orgums have done uh, while he's been gone so long. So we'll have to see what he does to wake everybody, you know, shake everybody awake, you know what I mean? Eventually shake everyone. That's right. <laughs> so this is a Jim Lee uh, spotlight variant featuring Azrael, which looks really, really cool. And then there is a Maria Wolf. April Fool's Detective Chimp variant. Uh, and these are great. Like, all of these April Fool's ones are yeah. fantastic. One of my favorite characters, mm -hmm. Detective Chimp. Okay, next up, we have Harley Quinn, issue 39. This is the Jenny Frizen variant for it. And it sounds like this is starting a new story arc for Harley. But, of course, Harley's solicits are written by Harley. And so they're kind of all over the place. Uh, so go check it out for yourself. But uh, I want to show you this really nice... Feels very Dolly Parton. <laughs> well, she looks to me like Kaylee Cuoco, who does the voice that for her true. in the uh, cartoon. Yeah. Yeah, very cool one though. And oh, also, yeah, no, this is your yeah, this yeah. is mine too. Uh, I gave you plenty, so yeah. I was going to take this one. Um, this is Green Arrow number eleven. Uh, just wanted to uh, show you this awesome variant cover. This is the Travis Mercer variant, and in this, this is the final battle between Oliver and Merlin. Mm. So. I think this is interesting. So this is issue 11. The original series was supposed to be 12. No, originally it was supposed to be 6. 6, and yeah. then 12, and then now uh, we're going to have it It's forever. ongoing, yeah. Forever and ever and ever, guaranteed. No, I don't know yeah. about that. But it's nice because I was... I was worried for a while because on the on the website, on the Lunar Distribution website, it still says of 12. Yeah. And I was like, maybe I misunderstood something. Maybe it is only 12. But in the newest DC Connect uh, catalog that came out, it does have the entry for Green Arrow number 13. Yep. So I, I, I breathe a sigh of relief after that because I <laughs> love this series. Number 10 that just came out this week was fantastic. They've all been good. Yeah. So I want to show you this awesome variant cover. And sounds like kind of the first big story arc the overall story arc is wrapping up soon yeah 
Next is Conan the Barbarian number 10. Uh, the solicitation on this one isn't super specific either. It sounds like, you know, it's your typical Conan story, which is not a bad thing because all of his stories are great. But, you know, it says that Conan travels to lands beyond to answer dark riddles of the past. Um, yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he, he tends his, to do that. It's yeah. On his resume. And unexpected allies await, fierce enemies loom, and the strange power of the Black Stone stirs in The Age Unconquered, which I think is, gonna, is the title of the next story arc. So... Just more Conan doing Conan things. Written by Jib Zub. Uh, Robert De La Torre is back on art on yes. this one. Uh, uh, Doug Braithwaite has been on art. He's great. Yeah. But that, that first arc with De La Torre on art, it looked exactly like Jean Buscema from back in the 70s. And he is back now for a new story arc. So I am 100% on board for this. Uh, this is our B cover. And then there is a De La Torre C cover. I mean, come on. That, yeah, that's, it's that's just classic. Yeah, it's classic Conan. Next up, we got graphic novels and more. Like a reprint... Uh, collected editions, everything. So, getting into it, we've got uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, number one. This is the fifth, fifth printing print. of number one. Can Deservedly so, it? yeah. yeah. Uh, I think every time we get a new printing of number one, we sell out of it. So, uh, keep them coming, because we still need them. And I like this, the gray tone. This looks like yeah. the second printing of the Ultimate Universe number one that they're coming out with. Mm, it kind of right. has the gray instead of yeah. the white. So don't miss out. Such a good series. If you're oh collecting them all, or maybe you still haven't read number one, don't miss it. And if you haven't, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, stop really? watching us and go, <laughs> go watch that one. Uh, next is the facsimile edition for showcase number 22, which is the first appearance of Hal Jordan. Yep. So if you're a Hal Jordan fan like me, uh, maybe you haven't read his first appearance before and how did he get his ring and all that kind of stuff that, you know, I've been served coming down and, and dying and passing the ring on. It's all in here. The first appearance of Hal Jordan complete with ads and all that stuff. Yep. And there's also the, uh, foil cover for That's this right. and yep. the sketch cover. That's right. Next up, we got mm. Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong, the hardcover. Now, this is hard going cover. to be $29.99. It collects uh, issues one through seven of the big crossover event. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, uh, Godzilla X Kong, really fun. Yeah, the new one. Yeah, oh, yeah, really we saw good. it yesterday. It was so good. It was so, like, it was a lot of fun, just pure fun. Yep. Yeah, so we are in a uh, golden age of Godzilla <laughs> right. and Kong once more. Yep. Uh, and if you didn't read this, uh, just a ton of fun. That, mm -hmm. That's I want. I love what they're doing now. The movies, the comics, everything. They're just having fun with it. it this is super fun. Like on the premise, seems maybe a little bit ridiculous, but this is really fun. Uh, lots of big action moments. Yep. This one is great. Absolutely great. So don't miss out on this. Coming soon. So next is the JLA Year One trade paperback. This collects the twelve issue JLA Year One miniseries. Uh, written by Mark Wade, among others, and this just you know just like all the DC Year One books, this tells us the the tale of J of uh, the first year of the Justice League of America. I read this a long time ago, and yeah. it's it's wonderful. I love this. There's a great cover I always love. Uh, it was like an Aquaman centric cover. Where they're all underwater. Oh and yeah. Like, there's something like squeezing them. Yeah. I don't remember, but it's very cool. This is going to be twenty nine ninety nine as well, but well worth it. This is a great story. Yep. And next up, we've got Dracula or Universal Monsters Dracula hardcover. This is going to be $24.99, and this collects the James Tynan and uh, Martin Simmons series. So this was our first one that kicked off the Universal Monsters. Like, we're just getting the, uh, the Creature from the Black Lagoon. And this is an uh, interesting one because it takes place kind of between the scenes of the Dracula movie. This is, since it's Universal Monsters, this is your Bela Lugosi original Dracula movie uh, set. But... You get some interesting in-between scene stuff about some of the uh, lesser scene characters and all of that. Now, here's something really cool with this. So we've got the uh, A cover right here, but they are also doing a... Uh, this is the Stephanie Pepper cover. They said they're only... This is the direct market cover, and it's only being printed this once. So if you mm. want this special variant for it, don't miss out. And then, of course, the big one that needs no real description whatsoever. This is Transformers, the trade paperback, volume one, collecting Transformers number one through six. We've talked about Transformers so much and our deep, deep love for this series. If you have not read it yet, or if you're like me who have read every single issue but want to read it all in one sitting, uh, do not miss this trade paperback. Uh, it's going to be $16.99. 
written and drawn by Daniel Warren Johnson. This is a, just one of the best books that I've read in a really, really long time. Uh, so this is the standard, edi uh, standard edition cover. There's also a direct market exclusive. Uh, this one, that's John Boy Myers, right? That's the John right? Boy yeah. Myers cover. That's the cover to number four. Mm -hmm. I believe. Um, and uh, this is the direct market variant. So this one is only going to be available in comic book shops like ours. Yep. yep. And that is it for comics from the future. Thank you so much for watching. A lot of really great stuff on this show. Uh, head over to infinityflux.net right now. You can see it at the top of the screen uh, where you can place your orders for these right now. Your orders are due this weekend. Uh, so anything you order for there, you're pretty much guaranteed to get... Uh, Everything you pre-order, you get 10% off of, and whether you shop local or we also mail. So great stuff there, wherever you are. Uh, we've got a show coming up on Monday where we're going over some of the biggest books coming out next week. And there is a lot of really mm -hmm. good ones. We've got Deadpool number one. Yep. We've got Geiger number one. We've got Redcoat number one. We've got Rook number one. Uh, a ton of stuff. Yeah. So don't miss out on that show as well. Remember to like and subscribe. It really helps us. We're ever closer to that 3,000 uh, follower mark. That We're was, less than 100 away, I think, from 3,000. Years ago when we started this, one of our main goals was to reach 3,000. So we are creeping ever closer. So if you're a fan of a positive comic news and talking about comics and looking at comics and all mm -hmm. that fun stuff, uh, you've come to the right place. Now, leave us a uh, emoji thing of I don't know if I don't know what the equivalent of a Deadpool a Wolverine uh, emoji would be. Is there like something with claws or something? You know, I don't I don't know. Yeah, leave us leave us uh, one of those. Um, uh, let's say a creature from the Black Lagoon emoji. I know there's like a little Dracula one. Leave us something. Uh, let us, anything. Yeah, yeah, let us figure out what it is. Right. Try to make it one of these books that you're most excited for. Uh, leave us a comment. We love responding to your comments. Uh, we love seeing them uh, and being able to communicate with y'all. Hopefully we'll have more opportunities coming up soon to do that even more, but stay tuned for all of that. So mm -hmm. until next time, see ya. See ya.